guys, how you doing? So today I thought I would show you the details of how we built our kitchen since we didn't do any really van build videos. Um, if you're curious to know how we built it, I'll go over the details of it. This is what it looks like and I will strip it all out so I can show you from the back out. Okay, so here it is all stripped out. So one thing that is very important is you want to buy all your items first. You need to build your kitchen around those items. It's one thing to have the dimensions, but it's a whole other thing to just lay it all out the way you want it, having the sink and the fridge and everything. So I've had that Dometic fridge since uh, the minivan, I believe, so I wanted to keep using that. And I purchased purchased this off Amazon. It's just actually a warming tray. I thought it made a perfect size for a sink. And we drilled a hole in it. And that's just a cheap bathroom faucet off of Amazon. So the plumbing is probably the most difficult part. At first we wanted a gray tank and I also wanted it to go down through the floor of the van. So we put a valve in to do that. But it turns out the gray tank just took up so much space and the plumbing ended up coming out too far. So we don't even use these valves. We just have it going, the, the gray water just goes down this bill trose right down underneath the van. So this is just a plastic drain, RV drain actually. And the, the stuff you use to put in drains ended up leaking, so we just used butyl tape and that has been working great. And we have this marine foot pump that makes the water all come out nice and slow, which I wanted, yet also your hands are free. So one goes into the, the fresh water tank, this hose here. I just have it here so it doesn't spill water on the floor. Then it goes through here. And then we had to adapt it with clamps and everything to go to the faucet. So that was the trickiest part. So we just have this stuff kind of hanging here because it was getting kinked up. So we just did whatever we had to do to prevent it from kinking. And these are just some pipe hangers to support it because this is pretty heavy. And I just taped it here. So that's the plumbing. So the framework, we just, first we started with the frame in the back. After we laid everything out the way we wanted it, I knew I wanted the sink on this side and I knew I wanted the fridge level with the counter and then the shelving in between. So after we built the frame in the back, we just built the frame out this way. And because the fridge is up, it gave us a nice storage area here. And at first I just was putting some random containers in here, but then I realized that I was wasting a lot of space that way. So I said, you know what, I just used some scrap wood and I made drawers for each spot, which I'll show you after. So this box here was actually kind of made separately, I believe, and then we just put it in. And then I just put a little push light here so I could see underneath. So not having a gray water tank actually allows me to use this space for other things and I'll show you that. So I just made the shelves after we did the frame here. I just We just cut pieces of wood to fit and made little shelves. And we just use the floor down here. So because there's not much counter space, I wanted a flip up table. So this table actually kind of acts as a cabinet door when it's down. And I just I just have some piano, piano hinge there that I had from the Prius. And I cut this board just to prop it up. And I put some dual lock on the top and this is the dual lock. So I wanted a place to mount this. So I put the dual lock here and a little right there. And that just mounts right there. And you'll see the ventilation for the fridge is right here. And also right there. So the drawer that goes here, I have some holes in it. So I also put a little dual lock on the bottom of the table. 
So I just need to line that up and push it down. And I have a nice level work surface. And we can sit here on the, the toilet stool and eat. And do whatever. So after the frame and the shelves were done, just measured the area for the counter and stained it. And cut the hole in it for the sink. And that gave me that counter. This is just one of those, it's like a silicone gel thing that sticks really well. That's why I keep one of my plants. And my water pick goes there. And of course, dual lock for the soap. Goes there. And that is our Bronner soap, so it's okay for the environment. I couldn't really find a good place to store the stove. And I like the idea of having it handy. And since I had that table for counter space, I decided to just try it here with Velcro. So that just stays right there with Velcro. I can move it out when I cook if I want, but usually I leave it there. I just make sure that the screen is fastened down there. And then uh, lately I've been putting the, the cutting board under here, just some non-slip material. Then I can just slide the cutting board there and it stays. So because this, you're not always on level ground and the drain is lower on one side than the other, I just made this little squeegee out of a juice bottle and added some tape to the bottom. So when it gets water in it, I just go like this, you know, to, to clean it up. Usually keep that there. So this is the tank that I use for my fresh water. I've had this for years. I'm not sure how many gallons it is, maybe six, seven. It actually doesn't say anywhere on it. So I have a carabiner clipped uh, cable tie to it. And what I do is I put another cable tie back there and hook this one to it. But I do have to cut it every time I want to take it out. So that just stays right in there. And then this tubing will go all the way down to the bottom. So I have some marker on the top of the tubing. So when the tubing's hitting the bottom, this should be in all the way. So I kind of use it like a dipstick. If I take this out and dry it off and then stick it back in, I can get an idea of how much water I have in the tank. Otherwise I can take the big cover off and look in with a flashlight. When both of us are in the van, it's lasted us about three days, but that's also we drink from it with our filtered water bottles. So sometimes what we'll do instead of taking it out and filling it, when I'm home I will take it out and fill it and we'll clean it. You can I can get my hand in here with a scrub brush and clean it really well. But what I did is I bought this little funnel from an auto parts store and if we buy a few gallons of water they're like 87 cents at Walmart we'll get some spring water and we can just fill it while we're traveling without having to take it out. So we've, that's what we usually do. So because I don't have the gray water tank here, I can fit this box kind of crooked, but I used it, I'll put paper towels in it, and this is our co little coffee pot for Doug. I've got a cable to, uh, gear tie around it just to keep it neat. I don't drink coffee, but he likes his coffee, so we use that. In the funnel, I'll just stick behind here. If we have a box of cereal or paper towels or whatever, I'll throw that right there. So it kind of looks like that when the hose is in it. So let me show you each drawer now. So like I said, I made these drawers out of scrap wood. So this one is different than, the, they're all a little bit different. <laughs> this I use thick wood. So I was able to just, you know, make a box, screw in the ends. It worked out perfectly that this big book stored right in here perfectly. So I put that in there first, and then that goes in there. And I just made the drawer so it has a little bit of extra for a grip. And because this plug right here, I don't want it to get pushed on with the table. I try to remember to keep this drawer out a little bit. So then when I close the table, it protects that plug a little bit. So that drawer has everything I need to cook with and bowls and everything. 
Another thing that just happened to be work out perfectly is this atlas. I stick it in like this. It lays flat in there perfectly. So this bottom drawer is made with thin wood, so I use little blocks of wood in the corners to attach it all. So I actually made these shelves according to the items I had in the kitchen. I went and found my tallest thing, which I believe was olive oil, and I built this drawer and shelf around it. So this is where my taller food might go. Most of it's in the house right now. And this is just a spray bottle of water I use to wet my hair or something in the morning. And this is the most important thing. It's vinegar and water. And this is how I wash dishes. I just spray them and wipe them off with the paper towel. And this is what I use to clean things. Because if you wash your dishes with soap, it takes a lot of water to rinse that soap off. So I really don't even wash dishes in the sink. I use that. So that fits there. So remember I told you how I had the fridge vents right there, so I just made some holes in this drawer to help with the ventilation a little bit. And this is just where I keep more snacks and stuff that's smaller, throw it in there. And this is just cooking utensils and baggies and stuff like that. This is just the cup that we use to rinse our mouth when we brush our teeth. And this is the plug for the drain. So from every place where I can't let it drain onto the ground, I can just plug it up like that. So I wanted a place to put fruit so it could stay, you know, kind of airy. So I put in these hooks here and I got this basket at Target and that hooks right up there. But you see how it swings so much? So I didn't want it to be doing that. So I made this little block of wood with two of those neodymium magnets on both ends. And if I just put it like that and like that, kind of kind of keeps from swinging so like every van dweller has I wanted a cover for the sink so I cut this little piece of wood to fit there so you always have to be thinking about what would happen in an accident so that's why everything is strapped down so this water is strapped down to here but I also didn't want it to come flying out this way so I have some dual lock here and right there and this board so this board had to be removable so we could take the tank out so I just line it up put it there and put it there and that keeps the tank from coming out so also usually I use this to hang my dish towel and because all this still looks kind of ugly, I wanted to cover it up. But I needed to get access to the pump, so I made like a two-piece curtain. Curtains I had in my bedroom, and just use dual lock to attach those. I love that dual lock stuff. And I made a little cutaway so my foot could get at the pump okay. And then I realized as time went on that it was hard to see inside the fridge at night so I put one light up there and I also put one right here facing over the sink. So there it is, that's the finished product. So if you have any questions just leave me a message in the comments and I'll get back to you. And please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. Take care.